some scenario about what happens to the infants. You either would give disturbance changes by so much at a particular time, and in response, I'm changing the manipulative input by this function. Okay? So, all right, let me write that down since it might help. And, so let me add a couple of things down. In my notes, I had examples of usage of this first, and then the generalization. I was thinking it might be better to first do the general and then give examples of usage, but I guess examples of usage, as, I, as is in my notes, might be better if I do that first. transfer function, you mean G U of S. That's the one we need for feedback control design. And the use transfer function I lost I'll be abbreviating it here. Plus, given a GU of S, I can go and use different methods to design my feedback. So that's what we really need. Uh, but how is a how can a transfer function model be used? Hmm? One question: How can a TF something to analyze the behavioral system. So for example, a question I can ask is, suppose that my system is on manual, which means the operator sets u of t at set by the operator at the nominal u value. So it's having u equals u naught. And the disturbance increases by, okay, my disturbance has nominal steady state 0.2, so let's say my disturbance increased by 0.1, e.g.
will be an example. So first, you need to have some functions for that. And obtain what deviation. concentration increased by 0 0.01. How, what would be the effect on the measurement of my system, on the measure concentration? You can use dictionary and the transfer function to answer that question. So in this case, or in this example, so in example, you would have u equals u norm, right? Florida is equal to Florida. So what's the deviation? Zero. Zero. And you have the d increased from the nominal by that much. So what would be the deviation of the disturbance? 0 0.01, right? It's the difference d1 prime is d1 minus d nominal. So that would be 0 0.0. So that's the first thing you need. You need to be able to use such a model. You need to assume you need to have a scenario. No matter what you're using, you cannot solve a system unless you define a problem. So to define the system behavior, you need to define what the inputs are doing. So you need to first specify what the inputs will be doing for your model. Once you specify what the inputs are doing, second step would be to use the dictionary and get the Laplace transform from the inputs. So then use dictionary integral of e to the minus stft. If ft is 0, integral of 0 times something is what? 0. So that's going to be 0. What would be d1 prime by? d1 prime, we saw here, would be 0.01. 
Remember one special case of the first entry is if I had one, which I get for k equals one and a equals zero, I got one over s. So what's the Laplace class move? 0 0.01. Exactly. So it really says 0 0.01 divided by s. Once I have the Laplace transform of the inputs, I may have the Laplace transform of the outputs. Okay, I'm writing here the gem form we will see in a minute. You have one GDI for every disturbance. So that's the general form. And in the example, y prime bar is going to be g u of s times zero. So plus g d one of s times d1 prime bar. In other words, that's zero. That's going to give me e to the minus e to the point 111 over s plus point 111 e to the minus 5s times point, zero, point zero 0.01 over s. Now what's the meaning? Okay, so that's how we get y prime bar. And the last thing, we invert this. Using the dictionary, but we also need to use partial fractions expansion. So I'm not getting ready to, to do this. So last step, y prime of t equals L inverse y prime bar use dictionary and a tool that you hopefully learn in DFQ, but we're going to learn it from scratch called partial fractions expansion. I'm going to do it different than you learned in the earlier class of the partial fractions expansion. I have a better method. Andrea, you're frowning. When did you lose me? Let me first ask Andrea. Never mind. No, I don't like never mind. When did I you lose me? I didn't know that was zero. Right. Oh, why zero? Because your prime bar is zero. Oh, I see. That bar is with the D1. That's why. Felix. Is that 0 0.01 over S? Yes. 0 0.01 over S. Yes. Because then this D1 prime is constant, and the Laplace transform for constant is constant over S. Okay? So you would have to use the dictionary and partial fractions expansion to get the answer. And this way you can get the answer that you can then graph. <laughs> I like drawings. Then you can graph. Hey. My statement in the example, it is supposed to set a manual at its normal value and D1 increases by 0.1. Yeah, but that's 0.1. Oh! That's 0.01. Thank you, Megan. This case at 0.1 to 0.01, take it 0.01. That's why. You have three for three if your question is correcting me. At least that. <laughs> okay. So that's how you would use it. All right, I've put a lot of concepts on your head. I think you definitely need a 15 minute break. <laughs> Let me give you a 15 minute break now.